Hello, hello, hello. Everybody, it's day 36 on the Appalachian Trail. 2017 early riser through hike. Coming at you live from the rocks and more rocks of Virginia. I seem to handle them a lot better in the morning when my mind's a little sharper. And if I sound like I'm talking funny, it's because it's freaking freezing out here. Woo, it's a cold night. I got up, temperature gauge was, I don't have a really big one, you know, it's a small one, just goes on my rucksack. So it's hard to differentiate between 21 and 23 degrees, but it was hovering right around one of those. It was freaking cold. We survived, stayed in the bed a little bit longer today. Didn't sleep much more, but sure felt good to be warm. If I'm shaking, it's because I'm bouldering. Um, a couple of notes. Today's, some of uh, the talks we're gonna cover will be about ego and the trail and how it's one of my um, things to do out here was to try to conquer my ego even more so in the solitude and the many hours of just walking by myself. No better time to do it while I'm unplugged from the matrix because the ego loves the matrix. Your ego needs the matrix to survive. And when you try to unplug from the matrix, your ego throws a fit and will do anything it can to get you back inside. So we'll discuss that a little bit later. That should be interesting. Some of you might not care. Some of you might be so overwhelmed by your ego that it's not gonna make sense to you. That's okay. Um, a couple of good additions to the diet that I enjoyed yesterday. Cheese sticks. Now I brought a cheese block out here before. A, it was heavy. B, I didn't like having to take time to cut it up. C, I had to use my killing knife, so it was dulling my killing knife up with some cheese. Wasn't crazy about that either. So cheese sticks were the obvious answer. And I love them. Adding good fat, some more protein, more calories. Good God, these rocks. You know, Pennsylvania, when the whole path's covered with rocks, you just can't claim too much more. I mean, how much more worse can it be when the whole path is nothing but rocks? Anyway, um, maybe the best addition, and it was just uh, off a fluke because it was the smallest bottle they had at the food line back in Perrysburg. But garlic infused olive oil. Delicious in my ramen last night. That was fabulous. And ramen is so much better with chicken. I bought a couple of cans of chicken and dumped them in a Ziploc bag and used them last night. I probably wouldn't have, it's gonna get a little warmer today. I probably wouldn't have used it much past last night, but I don't know, it's probably got so much salt in it, it wouldn't matter. But just delicious. That garlic infused olive oil is great. And it's 120 calories a teaspoon of just great fat. So yes, it gets aggravating to carry the extra weight, but the benefit to weight ratio, I think is well worth it. All right, we are heading northbound at a rapid speed of probably about two miles an hour right now, maybe a little less on these rocks. We're going to hopefully around my marker 285 today and tomorrow we're gonna crack the 700 mile barrier and McAfee knob should be tomorrow morning. So that's pretty cool, man. Knocking out the landmarks, turning these pages, y'all. All right, barring any mechanical injuries today, all is well. Sun's coming up right over there. Hope everybody's having a great day. Sorry for the blockage. I 
I just wanted to uh, relay, especially to the guys coming up behind me, guys and girls. Um, man, you got some decisions to make when you leave Harrisburg. Because those last two shelters are closed. That leaves the captain's house, which is okay. I think that's a better option anyway. Had it not been so early in the day or in the evening. And I think he's got free soda, so I'm kind of wishing I would have done that. Because y'all know now I have a soda addiction thanks to the, the nature boy. Woo! Um, if you stay in the shelters when they're closed, man, that's up to you. That's a risk you take. I had no other choice, and thank God I didn't keep going last night because there's nothing. There's no camping spots anywhere on these rocks. So you got to make a decision. Um, if you go past the captains, I think there's a couple of little camping spots, but there ain't many. There's just a whole bunch of hill in between you and the next shelter. Not a whole lot of water. Um, so you got to make some choices there. And really, I can't imagine the bubble coming through here because this is going to be tough on some people who aren't doing long days, who are doing eight to 12 miles still when they get here. They don't have many choices. So be prepared to camp. The captain's house is probably gonna be your best option. Um, yeah, and I don't think this is gonna go away anytime soon because these trees aren't gonna magically all fall or all regenerate uh, anytime soon. Having a vlog is tough. So I just got dealt with on my wife. So let's clarify something I said the other day. When I was talking about things that a through hiker needs from like a trail boss or something, I was referring more to the people out here that have AT&T, kind of like Kiwi did up front. Now he's, he's remedied his situation. Kansas still has AT&T and there's not a lot of ability to upload information. But what they can do every now and then, they'll hit a cell tower. And if you have information set up in a text message, not pictures, hopefully, just text about the weather, about good places to stay or something, that would help them out tremendously. Because I'm telling you, AT&T phone users are in a information blackout out here. Me having Verizon, I've only been about one or two days where I've had no coverage the entire time. Most of the shelters lately, none of them have had coverage. So you get up on high ground, you at least get a couple bars. All right, so let me clarify and uh, apologize to my wife who thought that was all directed at her. All right. All right, y'all, I think the trail's gonna be flat enough and less rocky, we can have this little segment now. So this is what I want you to do. Uh, bear with me I'm leading somewhere with this so i want you to take 20 seconds and i'll be quiet and i want you to get your mind to go totally quiet start now Right, even as I tried to sit there and do it, I started thinking about some things. About what I'm going to say next, about what I'm going to have for lunch. It's hard to control. We all have those incessant thoughts that never stop. It's like this <clears throat> processor in our brains that just keeps processing data. So the question today is, who is that? Who is that? What's all that mental chatter? Who's doing it? Because what I would tell you is, and what I firmly believe after doing, you know, reading about this and trying to become more self-aware over the past decade, your true inner self, the true being of who you are, it's quiet. It's, it's at peace. It doesn't need mental chatter. So if you believe that, and I firmly do, then who's doing the chatter? 
And that's where the secret comes. And that's where the matrix plugs into this equation. So that voice that wakes you up in the middle of the night sometimes worrying, the voice that won't let you go to sleep sometimes at night without taking some medication, the voice that's running circles around in your brain when you're sitting at a red light and you don't even notice that the light changes. Like, who is that? That's a big part of what I'm doing on the AT is trying to overcome that incessant mental chatter that just adds no value to your life. But uh, here's the secret. It tells you that it does. Because the ego has to have the matrix and you living inside of it to survive. And you've built the ego, your ego, over your entire lifetime. Now, let me caveat this by saying, man, I'm not a psychologist. I've got a couple of degrees, but none of them are in anything related to this. I've just been uh, on my own soul searching for, like I say, over a decade. Uh, when I just became sick and tired of that incessant mental chatter. And I got tired of my ego lead me around like a little puppy dog still does at times man it still does on this trail every single day to walk at peace and quiet is so freaking challenging but that's part of my challenge out here so i just ask how do you deal with it back there some people meditate the meditations are great just to and take away the word meditate if you think it's too hippie-ish or whatever just a time to sit quietly somewhere and clear your head of all thoughts like that's tough I do it at home try to every morning and it's still tough I have to use guided meditation things on YouTube sometimes just to help me quiet my mind down so all that mental chatter and the whole point of this is just so the ego can survive because the ego likes who you are inside the matrix. The ego likes being able to manipulate you to do what it needs. Whether it's to, oh man, I gotta reapply my lipstick or oh, I need to go to the gym because I'm looking fat. All these things that the ego is guiding you around to do because it wants to survive. And once it feels threatened, it's gonna fight even more. So once I started my journey, on this I noticed that the ego felt threatened so it started fighting back and it turned up the pressure and it sounds like I'm talking about this like little alien inside of me or inside of you and in a way that's kind of what it is so the my journey out here part of it is to be able to better control that to be able to better recognize when it's taken over because I'll sit here walking sometimes during the day then I'll find myself just talking out loud I, the mental chatter has now turned into a actual voice coming out of my mouth it's crazy how much it can overtake your life so that's the discussion point I'd like to hear some comments we'll talk about it more but I'm telling you I struggle every day while I'm walking Walking meditation is what I'm trying to achieve. I'm getting a little better at it after 660 miles. But man, I got a long way to go, and I'm not sure the trail is going to be long enough. All right. Just got the Warspur shelter. Why can I never? Like, why is it never a shelter like this when I'm ready to bed down? Look at these grassy areas. I'd love to throw my tent right down in there. Anyway, this is a nice little looking shelter. Now, it ain't going to hold that many, but I like it. This is a common design we've seen since we left Parisburg. All right, I'm going to take a quick break, do a map check, refuel, a couple of priorities of work. Head on down the trail, y'all. This is the water source at Warspur Shelter. It's right beside it. That is a badass shelter. If you can make it to that one, make it beautiful 
That was a butt kicking. All right, here's the challenge. We call them man challenges at work, but if you want to be general, neutral, person challenge, warrior challenge. How about that? All right, when you leave Warspur Shelter, uh, it's going to be flat and a little bit downhill down to Hutchinson Road. That'll be the first road you cross over. And then the trail's rocky and uphill and pretty brutal. Not much fun, to be honest with you. And then you'll come up, after what seems like a torturous eternity, you'll come up to another road. And I think it's uh, Virginia 601 route. All right, when you cross over that road, the challenge is you cannot stop until you get to the top. I think it's, I don't even know the name of this. I'll have to look it up in the book again. But you'll know when you're at the top. It's an old road bed. So it's nice and wide. There's no There's nothing impeding your movement other than a sheer Almost vertical climb it feels like and it's a long way like it's several times around a running track for sure If not close to a mile of of ups So that's the challenge. I'm issuing everybody coming behind me that sees this um, From route 601 to the top of the hill where it flattens out Don't stop don't pause a mnemonic I'm using now uh, to, to ease my mind and quit getting angry when I'm climbing hills um, is forward and I use forward because you're not getting up the hill if you're just standing there sucking wind looking up at it so forward lean into it to keep that momentum going open all your senses Feel your poles digging into the ground. Feel your feet hitting the ground. Feel the breath coming in your nose and exhaling through your mouth, possibly. Or the drool coming out of your mouth and the froth. Um, and then welcome the experience. So the mnemonics flow. And uh, I just keep saying that over and over. And <clears throat> it keeps me in the present moment on the way up. And it doesn't suck as bad. And actually, it's kind of peaceful. And it's enjoyable. So try that out. Flow. Laurel Creek shelter again same type of shelter they've been doing some lumber work around here probably again because of the moss this place again looks devastated if you can see how thin the trees are but this shelter is open and there are a couple of tent and spots right back there maybe one right there anyway pretty decent shelter here we go, some of my favorite views, I love it. Look at that house right there. Lord, I want that. It's so cool. So awesome. AT is so cool because you can just be so deep in the woods and so far from anything and then walk a few 10 miles and be somewhere cool like this and then be right back in the woods again. Love that old barn. Two things of excitement. Fact! We just turned another page. Walking often pages, yo. Second fact. Here's the Keffer Oak. So giant. Holy cow. How beautiful is that? Just magical. That is incredible. Very cool. Yeah, that's right. Gorgeous. Love it. Had to earn this one. We started all the way down there at the bottom. And I will tell y'all what. I gave Virginia props for some switchbacks on one hill and ain't seen a switchback since. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, it's almost four o'clock. 1600 for the military folk I've still got I'm working on miles about 21 right now and still have 
seven to go to the shelter I want to go to. So we'll see how it plays out. If I can find something with with uh, water and a good campsite, I take it to. We're gonna at least go 25, maybe even. Couple. I guess a couple more to be the shelter. All right, just trying to set us up for Delville. And I uh, appreciate the food suggestions. I'm planning on staying at the hotel right there by the three little pigs and whatnot. So, me and them little pigs going to have a, a sit-down chat. And they ain't going to like the results. They might close that place down after I get out of there. And then for all you can eat Chinese, yeah, that sounds like a plan too. So I might do the three little pigs for lunch. But man, I'm gonna have to find some Mexican too, y'all. It's gonna rain Sunday, so when I get in town, I'll see what the impact of that's gonna be. Maybe a delayed start Sunday out of there. Well, you never know, early riser. May take a car load day. You don't know. You don't know what I'll be doing. Rocks make me move slower. Then Coach B drives. You know what I'm saying, Curtis. You know what I'm saying. All right, y'all. Made it to Nade Shelter. It's 6-14, 18-14 for the military folk. On the 23rd of March, day 36. Whoo! Sarge is tired. Sarge is tired of bouldering. You know, I know there's people out there that probably really like that part of the trail. I just don't happen to be one of them to each their own. That's good. That's definitely not something I would come back and do on a section hike or something. Uh, I have no desire whatsoever to sit there and walk on the side of rocks for an hour and a half. Jacking your feet up. Privy up there. I like this shelter. I like where it's at. All right, y'all. I'll do a wrap up here in a little while by myself now. But there was a section hiker behind me. Um, before the last shelter, so don't know if he's gonna stop there. Or keep coming here All right out All right, everybody Close out day 36 For the second night in a row Not really like <clears throat> There isn't really a flat camping spot here So again, I'm sitting up in the shelter. It's okay. As long as there isn't any sick people in there. Um, man, I'm tired. That's a tough 27 miles today. So those coming behind me, if you stay anywhere at the captain's house, if you stay at the captain's house and try to do what I did today and come to the shelter, all those big climbs I did, then you get to add the one that's right before Bailey Gap shelter. Wouldn't suggest it. It's a tough day. I got a walking on those stupid boulders. Because it makes you walk your feet are like this and every time you step your foot slides in your shoe a little bit so my right heel I got a blister on the bottom the bottom of the hill never in my life have I ever had a blister there no big deal use a thread technique put some old skin on it in the morning be good as new um, I ain't got much for today it was a good day some good views a lot of rocks Virginia and its rocks becoming legendary in my mind anyway. Um, plan tomorrow is to get 25 in and set us up. We're at a uh, mile marker 685 right now. We're going to go over 700 tomorrow. New target will be 800. Um, and Delville's at 728. So 25 will put us at 210. Yeah, still gives us 18, so we can do it. Not a big deal. Still debating on Sunday. It's going to rain. Um, we'll have that conversation later. Um, may just take a late morning and do 15 in the afternoon on Sunday, or not against uh, visiting Delville for an extra day. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Have no Wi Fi. I'm sorry, no uh, 4G. Have it intermittently throughout the day, but not enough to. To post a video so probably just get a whole lump of them in Delville. All right y'all good night to uh, TCC and B love y'all y'all are my life I miss y'all um, still pushing north having a good time appreciate all the comments
Yeah, it's good. W-O-T-P. Walking off them pages, yo.